Do heat pumps work in winter? My name's Alan Hart and today I've got um, a bit of an interesting one today. I've got Pete, uh, Peter, Peter Armstrong from Mixergy and, and he's done a short video for us just to show us about heat pumps and, and do the work and do the work in winter, wintery conditions. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, please put them below. If you've got any experience yourself in heat pumps, air source heat pumps, ground source heat pumps, any type of uh, technologies really, new new technologies, then please, if you could, put some comments below because, you know, we'd all be interested to see that. Let's, uh, let's go over to Peter. Thanks, Alan. So, as you were saying, we're interested to see how effectively an air source heat pump operates in wintry conditions like today when we have snow, low temperatures and high humidity. Behind me, we have a valent Aerotherm 8 kilowatt monoblock air source heat pump. We've got some ambient sensors measuring temperature, humidity, and in the lab, we're gonna be measuring the power as this heat pump warms up a hot water tank. Over time and over different temperatures, this will allow us to see what the coefficient of performance is like, and critically answer the question, how much power does this uh, consume for a given amount of heat under really cold weather conditions? So let's take it away and uh, see how it goes. So we're here in the test lab, it's a bit warmer in here. The heat pump we were just talking about moments earlier is behind me, behind this wall in fact, outside. And it's going to be transferring heat during this test into this cylinder. This is the Mixer-J heat pump ready cylinder. It will actually work with a gas boiler through normal coil connections or direct electric. But at any time during its life, after install, it can be retrofitted with a heat transfer module, plate heat exchanger and pump basically which can then take heat from an air source or a ground source heat pump. The equipment behind me, that's going to be measuring the power going into the heat pump and also the energy being transferred from the heat pump into the cylinder. We're going to heat the cylinder up from about 10 degrees to 50 odd degrees and over that time span we're going to be able to examine the coefficient of performance of the whole system under these really wintry conditions. So we're going to kick off the test now and then we'll have a look at the data in a moment. So we heated up the test cylinder in the lab using the heat pump outside and we've got the graph next to me which shows the temperature inside the cylinder during the test. On the horizontal axis we've got the time in minutes throughout the duration from the very beginning to the end of the warm-up period and on the vertical axis we've got the temperature in, inside the uh, tank at all times. You'll notice there is a, a dwell at the beginning where the temperature of the tank doesn't change. That's the heat pump getting up to temperature. So the system loop has to get up to a, a temperature that's higher than the cylinder itself before heat will start transferring. So we've got this little dwell time. Then after that, we start transferring heat and the temperature rises and it goes, you can see, just above 30 degrees and then the temperature stops. That was the point at which the evaporator uh, in the heat pump got iced up. So the heat pump then entered into a defrost cycle. It was quite cold, humid, and so nothing happens whilst the heat pump is, is defrosting. After a while, once all of the ice is uh, melted off the evaporator radiator and off the back of the heat pump, it's then in a position to start heating the cylinder again, which it then duly does, uh, and continues from about 35 degrees all the way up to its target temperature, well, 55, just under 55 degrees. So uh, underneath this chart, let's plot the um, energy consumption over the same period of time. So we were measuring the energy consumed by the heat pump using an electric pulse meter. And you can see that it, from the beginning, it starts rising uh, the, uh, the, the kilowatt hours of energy going into the heat pump. It, it, during the de-icing de phase, it, it stops a little bit, it drops down a bit, um, and it sort of slowly rises before the system's defrosted, and then it goes back at full power in terms of transferring heat from the ambient conditions outside into the tank. So with that measurement, what we can do is we can track the change of the energy consumption against the change in temperature in the tank, and use that to determine the coefficient of performance. So now, if we look at the coefficient of performance, initially it's zero for the first few hundred seconds whilst the heat pump's warming up. And then, uh, for the first phase of heating, when it's going up towards 30 degrees, we have a COP of 2.7 or thereabouts. 
Um, so that's a pretty, pretty good performance. We are operating at a low temperature, but nonetheless, we're getting a lot of heat transferred uh, for each unit of electrical power in spite of these cold conditions. When we hit the defrost uh, period, COP goes uh, to zero. In fact, it's actually slightly negative because you're consuming power without delivering any heat into the cylinder. But let's call it zero uh, before the system then resumes uh, with heating again. Uh, at this point, over the final stage of heating towards uh, 55 degrees target temperature, the COP has dropped uh, quite, quite substantially down to 2, so 2.7 down to 2, and that reflects the fact that we're now discharging heat at a higher temperature. The coefficient of performance is very sensitive to temperature and fundamentally limited by the difference between your target temperature and uh, your outdoor temperature. So what are the conclusions here? Well, um, I guess there's a number of interesting takeaways. One is um, we find that heat pumps definitely work in wintry conditions. I mean, it was about minus one outside, very humid, snowy. Uh, so in spite of that, we were still getting a, re a pretty respectable coefficient of performance. However, it's, what's clear is that for efficient operation, uh, particularly for space heating, I mean, we were heating hot water in a tank, but you can use this as a proxy for space heating at the different temperatures along this graph. And what's clear is you really want your space heating system to be able to operate at the lowest temperature practical uh, for maximizing, really maximizing the coefficient of performance, particularly during wintry conditions. So, um, you know, if you can get a design temperature of say 40 degrees for continuous operation, uh, then you're really going to be having a, a really decent um, coefficient of performance. The self-defrost phase is, is quite energy intensive and um, we're going to look at a steady state temperature measurement uh, to see how much that affects the steady state coefficient performance during continuous space heating. But uh, in terms of charging a hot water cylinder from stone cold to fully hot, um, we're concluding here that actually it's, it's this valent heat pump is performing pretty well. So I want to talk a little bit about the hot water cylinder that was used for producing those graphs of the temperature during the air source heat pump test. It's actually a Mixergy hot water tank and it's here behind me. And one of the interesting things about it is it has a plate heat exchanger module for transferring the heat more efficiently than you can do with a coil, which is quite cool. So we can get much more volumetric performance. So this is actually quite a small, dinky, 120 litre slimline tank. And we're able to get the entire volume of it accessed by the plate heat exchanger. With a big coil, it doesn't actually heat all of the water in the tank because it's some way off the bottom and there's also a temperature gradient across it during heating, depending upon how it's uh, connected up. Consequently, we can get something between 10 to 18% more hot water out of this uh, plate heat exchange arrangement. And then we also have the benefits of the gauge, which gives you visibility of how much hot water is in, at any time. And you're also able to boost uh, the, the hot water level to whatever level you like. And um, it's connected to the internet. So if, if you want to control it or uh, set a schedule on your phone, you could do that. And it's, it's ready for smart tariffs in the future with the smart meter rollout that's happening. Um, all Mixer G cylinders from now on are heat pump ready. So if you install a Mixer G tank for a system boiler, um, it will work for a system boiler with a, with a regular coil, but with these ports, it's ready to accept a heat transfer module with a pump and a plate heat exchanger for a heat pump install in the future. So if the household does get a heat pump, you don't have to swap the cylinder out. Um, you can just get this heat transfer module. It makes it a simpler job. So um, that was what I wanted to talk about. And um, thanks, Alan. It was uh, really interesting putting this together for you. And I hope, hope you found the results interesting on the wintry heat pump tests. Thank you, Peter, once again for that. Um, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'm sure Peter will be looking and maybe a bit answer some of them questions for you. Are you convinced? Do you think air source heat pumps are the solution? Would you have one in your property? Again, please put some comments below and let me know what you think. Thank you.